So now we have our bird, our hawk, that looks something like this. We have feathers, which are composed of individual hairs aligned as a uh, strips, and they're rotated a little bit so they don't overlap each other, and the symmetry operator copies them onto each side. So our overall stack looks like this. And now we're ready to finally place our detailed feathers onto these hair strips. So first thing I want to do is maybe reduce the count of the strips a little bit, because if we look at the reference feather, uh, I count about maybe 24 to 30 individual feathers on the wing, and I think here we'll have uh, roughly twice this amount, if I count it correctly. So first thing to do is to go to hair from guides and reduce the surrender count. I'm not going to reduce it by too much, because if I do, I need to make sure that uh, one polygon at least has one hair on it, or we end up having no hairs at all. But uh, tweaking this render count parameter to make it smaller will provide us with a decent amount. So right now we have about maybe 34 feathers, uh, so maybe it's a slightly bigger bird, but this will depend largely on your preference and modeling choices. Of course these parameters can be tweaked at any point, and another way to modify the count of these feathers is to go into the UV editor, and with my bird selected we have our strip here, and you can just scale this up or scale this down, and this will also modify the number of our feathers. So let me just demonstrate. If I scale this up, it pushes the feathers together. If I scale this down, it spreads them further apart. Uh, so this is just another way to do it, but I think just modifying the hair count is the easier route for this. Next thing, I'm actually going to scatter my feathers into these billboard hairs over here. So I'm gonna go to File, Import, then I go to the directory where I saved my propagated feather from the first tutorial in this series. And this file is also available for download on our website. And you just double click to import this feather over here. I'm just going to drag it a little bit to the side so it is uh, visible more clearly. I'm just going to leave it here. Next, I'm going to select my feathers over here. And on top of this whole operator stack, I'm going to add a new operator called strand scatter. So I'm going to add this operator. And in here, I can use this add reference strands button to select this feather. Once I do this, you can see that every single strip of hair has been replaced with an actual feather geometry. And this geometry is uh, fine hair, so this is not a texture or anything. Uh, and now we can modify and play around with these feathers just like we would with our hair. So first let's go and try to change the width of the hairs. If I go to change width right now, if I do this, you notice that nothing will happen. And to make our input hair width control our feathers, we need to go back to scatter over here and set this target width method from proportional to input width. So after we switch this option to input width, the width of the hair that comes before the scatter operator will control the shape of our feathers. If I go back to change width operator and I adjust the width, you can see now that our feathers become thinner and thicker, depending on the value that I select. And this is very useful because now we can directly control our feather shape without having to adjust anything about this reference feather over here. So now that we have these good looking feathers in our scene, we can go and look at the reference a little bit and compare it to what we have. And obviously we are way off, but this is easily fixed. Uh, and that's what we're going to do now. So first thing to notice is that the feathers are continuing the shape of the, of the wing itself. And then the next thing is that the length kind of changes from being very long to kind of tapering down and a little bit more down towards the wing. So we're going to try to replicate this. Again, this is all easily done because we did not make any destructive changes along the way. And going back to edit guides and adjusting the guides will pretty much control our overall feather shape. I'm going to go here and I'm going to start shaping my feathers. I'm going to make this feather follow the wing shape a little bit more and the rest of the feathers I'm going to make longer and adjust them like this. trying to make them somewhat copy the reference image. I can also always go back to my reference feather and change settings there. For example, if I want to make the barbs a little bit thicker, I think they're, they're pretty thin, I can change the curve. And as I change the curve, my final feathers on my bird are also being changed. I think we need to make the feathers a little bit thicker. And also these rotations over here are a little bit off, so I can always go back to my edit guides operator select the root mode and rotate the strands 
until I get the results that I want. And look at the orientation of the rotation for these feathers. You can see that they're being rotated towards the bottom of the bird. So we need to make sure that we have the same kind of effect. And we get something like this. So before finessing the shape of the feather even further, let's um, also let's go back and look at the reference. You can see that the feathers throughout the wing are a little bit different. So for example, these feathers over here are not very symmetrical. One side is much shorter than the other side. The feathers here are very round and big, and the feathers towards the end are much shorter in size. And this is a good segue into demonstrating the application of different reference feathers, different parts of our groom for the feathers here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my base reference for the feathers, and I'm going to make a bunch of copies. So just copy and paste, Control c Control v move this aside, make another copy, move this aside, and maybe we'll have four different feathers. But this is going to be our sort of feather palette over here. And uh, next is I'm going to go to my scatter operator and inside this uh, reference strands I'm going to select uh, this feather over here. Right now we don't see any difference but if I go and start adjusting this specific reference, for example changing the length ramp of it, you can see that only some of the hairs in the final room are being adjusted. And right now the way that the reference feathers are scattered onto our final hairs is random but we need to make sure that we have fine control over where this happens. So I'm going to go back and select my uh, hair mesh. I'm going to go to scatter and I'm going to add the rest of the feather shapes. I'm going to add this one and I'm going to add this one. And now we have four different feather shapes referenced into our final groom. And I'm going to go to my edit guides and I'm going to create a new root channel. So I go scroll down. And in here where we have our strand channels, I'm just going to click on the first strand channels and click add. And I'm going to add a channel called feather type. Of course, you can name this wherever you like. Now uh, that I have my feather type, I'm going to go and set the channel value for each one of the guides to be a different numerical index. So first thing is I'm going to select this guide. I'm going to set this value to zero. Enter and assign value. I'm going to select this guide. I'm going to set a value of 1. I'm going to press assign value. I'm going to set this one to 2. And I'm going to set this one to 3. Assign value. So you can kind of visualize the, using the colors here. They don't go which guide has uh, which value. Uh, but essentially what we did is we created a channel where this guide is uh, value 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to use these values as indices into these reference strands to select them. So in this distribution method, I'm going to change the value from random to channel. And for the distribution channel, I'm going to select our feather type option. So now we can go and modify this reference feathers. And uh, when I do this, each feather will have its own type. For example, these edge feathers here, we want one side to be much shorter than the other. Again, following this reference here. Uh, so I can go to my last feather here. Go to Propagation Operator. Scroll all the way down where we have selected side settings. I'm going to select side 1. And I'm going to change Length Override option to a smaller value. As I do this, you can see that the length of just one side of this feather is being adjusted. And it looks like I've just made a mistake with the assignment of the channel values. Uh, where I assign 0, 1, 2, and 3, we should instead assign a value between 0 and 1. Because as you see right now, I changed the side of this feather and it changes the sides of all of these feathers uh, here. So it's easily corrected by going back to edit guides. 0 is fine. Uh, it should be, still be 0. This guide over here should have a value of 0 0.25 because we have four feathers and 1 divided by 4 is 0 0.25. So I'm going to select it and uh, select the feather type channel. So we have 0 0.25 and I'm going to press assign channel, assign value. Uh, this one is going to be 0 0.5. And the last one can be 0 0.75 or uh, 1, it doesn't matter, uh, because it's going to select the last feather. 
So now that we have this, this guide will use uh, this feather, this guide will use this feather, and this guide will use this feather. Again, you can always uh, insert more guides if you want to, and when you do that, make sure that you assign the correct value for the feather type. So next I'm going to adjust uh, this feather's shape a little bit. And once I'm happy with the result, we can move on to texture. Right now, there is no texture being produced for the scatter operator. This is why we're just seeing our default hair color. Uh, but I can generate texture right inside this operator by going to the texture coordinates dropdown and selecting an option here. We can copy the input uh, texture coordinates from our hair, which will just use the surface coordinates. Or we can copy the reference feather coordinates, which are actually the texture coordinates from these individual feathers. If I do this right now, nothing shows up because we didn't assign a shader. So let me right click here and assign existing material, which we assigned to one of these feathers. When I do this, we get the texture from these feathers. But the problem is that each feather now has the same texture coordinate. And the reason for this becomes evident if we go and look at the UVs that are generated. So I'm just going to go and add a mesh from strands operator. I'm going to set the texture coordinate generation to copy directly from here. And I'm just going to go and use the UV editor to visualize how our UVs are generated. You see, we have the whole UV space filled with just one feather. And this is fine if you want all feathers to have the same texture coordinates. But we want to have different uh, texture coordinates depending on different input feathers. So to enable this, I can go back to scatter. And inside this uh, texture coordinates option, uh, I can select this atlas option. So Atlas will actually generate different texture coordinates for each different feather and it will allow you to paint them individually. So now if I go and select my feather shape and look at this uh, texture coordinate, you can see that each feather is represented using its own space within the UV graph and you can paint this individually. Each one of these feathers we call a separate island. And if you go back to scatter operator, you have different ways to generate this texture island here. Right now it's set as per reference, which means that it's going to create one island for each input reference uh, feather shape that we have. But you can also change it to be either uh, per strand group. So for example, if you assigned different strand groups to different input hairs, each one of those will have a separate island generated. Or you can even use a channel. So if you have a channel and the, it, has, it has values like we have, uh, like we specified for feather types, you can you can select the texture coordinates based on those channels. So just to just to show how to paint this texture, I'm going to quickly do this without much regard for being realistic or anything. I'm going to go to image and select the UV snapshot option. I'm going to generate a snapshot here. And then I can use my favorite image editor to paint this snapshot. I open this in a Affinity Photo Editor. And here, let me just for the very, very basic uh, demonstration, paint each feather as a separate color. This feather is going to be green. This feather is going to be blue. This feather is going to be red. And this feather is going to be pink. So I'm going to save my file. Go back to my scene. We don't really need mesh from strands anymore. Uh, this was just to demonstrate the UV tiling. And then I can go back to my shader. And after reloading my material, you can see that the colors that we specified for the texture are applying correctly onto our feather mesh. So again, this is a quick and dirty way to show this, but you can see how this can be used in a more production scenario where you can uh, adjust the colors of the feather, just like we did in the initial feather tutorial to vary it between the base and the tip and the different barb colors and different sides. Uh, so use the same technique to create more layers uh, stacked on, on top of this layer to create a detailed bird wing. And uh, you can use the same technique for other parts of the body, for example, for this tail over here. And you can separate each one of these feather layers into its own separate object. 
or you can use the same base distribution to place these uh, feathers inside the same feather shape. This workflow can be determined by you based on your requirements uh, and your asset structure. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you very much for watching.